Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In today's painting video I'm going to share a technique with you with oil and acrylic paint that I think is most underrated. Many of you who are painting with oils or are just dabbling with the medium might already know that oil paintings take a lot of time to dry and usually you're not able to finish a painting within one session. You have to wait a couple of days or even longer depending on if you have used a fast drying medium or not. So it gets really annoying and frustrating if you want to finish an oil painting and you can't. Within the past years I have experimented with a lot of different techniques on how to speed up the drying process with oil paints. I came across a couple of methods, one being starting with watercolors and then continuing with oil paints. Of course, this method is only possible on paper, obviously. But recently I discovered a new technique that I am absolutely fascinated with and which totally surprised me on how effective and Beautifully, this painting technique works. And I am speaking of starting with acrylic paints and continuing with oil paints. Some of you might already have heard of this technique or even tried it. For some reason, I never tried this technique. I think one of the reasons is that I just didn't possess any acrylic paints, only hobby paints. And the hurdle to actually go out and buy acrylic paints and palettes and whatnot was just always too big for me that I would actually have tried it. Also I felt that acrylic paints are pretty expensive actually and whenever I was in the art supply store here in Germany I just didn't want to spend my money on something that I didn't know would even work and then I had spent like more than a hundred dollars maybe on acrylic paints because I would have needed a couple of different paints in order to do this technique and so I never tried it. But then something happened, two companies contacted me to try out their paint supplies and I was always thinking of this technique and I looked through their shops and they both offered acrylic paints as well. I just took the opportunity to try out their acrylic paints and this was such a good decision and I should have done this way earlier. I should have spent my money on acrylic paints because it just improved my working process so heavily and it made painting so much easier that I'm just completely shocked that I haven't tried this technique before. So in this video I show you my new favorite painting technique, which I think is most underrated. Because I haven't seen a video about this anywhere else and I think it should be shown more often because it is so useful. I will be also explaining the process of this portrait and the individual steps that I took to finish it. This portrait is part of a larger commission and I might upload a video about this painting once it is finished on YouTube as well, but if I don't do that you will definitely find the finished painting on my Instagram account. Also, you can find all information and materials that I used to create this painting down in the video description in all my videos, so never forget to check that out. I paint with the 24 acrylic paints from Mozart and I used the Stay Wet palette from Dela and Rowney. In my opinion the Mozart acrylic paints are amazing for beginners because they are super affordable and the paints are pretty pigmented. I was very surprised, they are almost as pigmented as my oil paints. Of course not that pigmented, but I could get the job done without having to apply multiple layers of the paint. Also a huge improvement for acrylic painting is using a stay wet palette. It is like a box with a lid and a reservoir and a membrane paper which keeps your acrylic paints wet for up to two weeks. It really works and it is a real game changer so I can absolutely recommend it. If you don't have that you can paint on everything else like a plastic, paper or glass plate, palette, normal plates, 
a piece of paper, cardboard, pretty much everything. <laughs> you can put your acrylic paints on pretty much everything. I'm also working with a retarder from Golden, which increases the drying time of your acrylic paints. This is particularly helpful if you want to make blendings and gradients, especially when painting portraits. In this case, however, the subject is pretty small and I can work relatively fast, so the acrylic paint doesn't get too much time to dry anyways. But nevertheless, it is very helpful, especially when you want to come back to an area which you have previously worked on. When that area is dry, you can't really do anything about it. But if it's still wet, you can a little bit alter it or make blendings. So having a good retarder can really improve your acrylic painting process. I tried the Golden Retarder. It's, in my opinion, really amazing. It also makes your acrylic paint a bit more fluid, so it's not that thick. If your acrylic paint is inherently very fluid and not that opaque, it is not that great to work with a retarder because you end up with very thin and transparent layers. But if you have very pigmented and thick acrylic paints, a good retarder will work perfectly for you. Okay, and now let's finally start with the tutorial part of this video. I started with painting in the eyes. For me it is important to have a detailed brush with which I can make very fine and subtle lines. The painting surface on which you are working makes a huge difference as well. I painted this painting on my favorite kind of canvas, which is a pre-primed fine cotton canvas with almost no grain. It's very subtle and I also added two layers of silver acrylic paint on the surface so that I have a nice underpainting and color instead of just the white of the canvas. With my detail brush I started with the darkest parts of the painting first. So for example the pupils, the irises, the nostrils and the shadows between and on the lips. This is not something you have to do, you can start wherever you want. I just like to follow the same technique that I use when I paint with oils. I'm familiar with this way of painting and I feel most comfortable with it. And it seems to work with acrylic paints too, as long as I use a retarder and as long as I don't expect that the paint blends as perfect as it does with oils. I want to make sure to get the important features of the face correct right in the beginning so that later on in the process I can focus on filling in the rest of the face and concentrating on the remaining areas. After having finished the eyes, the nostrils, the eyebrows and the lips, I continued with mixing the skin tones around these features and then I filled in the colors in between those midtones. Normally when painting with oils, I don't have any problems with blendings or gradients or smoothing out the skin areas in the face. But with acrylic paint, even when you use a retarder, some of the areas that you have worked can dry and then you can't really do blending there. However, that's no problem with this technique. It doesn't matter if you don't get smooth blendings or gradients right in the beginning. Because for that, we will use oil paints later on in the process. So if I don't get a smooth blending like I see it on my reference photo, I just don't mind and I continue with filling in the remaining parts of the face and focusing on the right color value and the right colors. I also concentrate on the proportions and get the portrait as close to the reference photo as it is possible with acrylic paints. Since I know what is possible with oil paints, the moment when I switch to oil paints is when I don't get further with acrylic paints. So when I have trouble getting any blendings or subtle color variations on the skin, I know this is a point where I can switch to oils. An example for this is the area around the mouth and the cheek where you usually have subtle variation in value and color. So when I get to the point where I have filled everything with color and the details look good and the blacks are as black as they should be, but I can't seem to be able to get subtle color variations and 
value variations done, I switch to oil paints. This is the right moment for it. For the sake of the video, I just continued with oils on her face. But what I would usually do and what I would also recommend to you is to first finish everything else in the painting. The background, all the details, all the other skin areas, pretty much everything that you can do with acrylics. Because they dry faster, you can save time, you can go over areas again and again until they look good because it is not recommended to work with acrylic on top of oils. Although it is possible, the other way around is more safe for your painting. So try to work with oils over acrylics, but not the other way around. After having finished the first part of the painting process with acrylics, I started with my oil painting process at square one again. The first layer of acrylics is like the first layer of oils. So whenever I start a portrait with oils, I have to do a first layer, then let it dry and then continue with my second layer. This is what I do here. I just start the second layer of oils. But the amazing thing is that I can do it at the same day. So I only paint it for maybe one or two hours to finish the first layer of paint on the portrait. And then I could start right away with the second layer. How amazing is that? It's just so wonderful to do that. If you are used to wait for a couple of days to continue with your portrait, but then you can do it at the same day, it's just fantastic. And I must say the painting surface that I used for this portrait is really amazing. Uh, I worked with the Arteza canvas panels for my recent acrylic paintings and they are pretty decent. But to be honest, my regular portrait canvas is definitely better than the Arteza canvas panels. So I didn't really notice that I was working on acrylics, whereas on the canvas panels it was definitely noticeable and it was very slick when painting on them. But here I couldn't notice any difference at all. It was like painting on a layer of oil. So it was very easy to me, it wasn't that difficult. And I could just start my regular second layer of oils where I would just go over all the areas again and I start with a detailed brush at the eyes and add all the details, pretty much the same steps that I do when I start a portrait. For my oil painting process, I use oil paints from Schminke and Rembrandt and Safflower oil. That's it. Because the portrait is very small, I don't use any painting medium. Normally I use Licrin Original from Winsor & Newton, which makes your paint very slick and it decreases the drying time. But here, in this case, I needed opaque paint to cover the layer that I previously painted with acrylics. If I would have used Lacrin Original, I would end up with very transparent oil paint that didn't cover very much and I wouldn't be able to finish the portrait in only one session. In my oil painting process, like in my acrylic painting process, I started with finishing the details, like the eyes, the eyebrow, the nose and the lips. And because this was oils, I could use all the time in the world to make the smoothest gradients that I wanted. You have to make sure, though, to get the right amount of paint on your brush. I try to use as much paint as I can on each portion of the portrait. When I want to make smooth blendings with my dry brush technique, I need a lot of paint, so I try to use as much paint as possible. Of course, in areas like the eyes, I can't use as much paint as on the cheekbones, because with a too thick layer of paint on the canvas, I'm not able to paint any details. For everyone who doesn't know my dry brush technique for smooth blendings, here's a short explanation. I start with a relatively thick layer of paint and let it dry for half an hour. Then I use a dry brush and carefully touch the surface. This way all the colors smoothly blend into each other. And this way I can get wonderfully subtle blendings, which I need when I paint portraits. For more info about this specific technique and a full painting tutorial dedicated to smooth blendings with oils, go to patreon.com slash and support me at the $5 reward tier. To finish the portrait, I added spots of color on the face and blend them into the surrounding paint. Most of the times I don't get the exact color value and color right at the first attempt. 
So adding these spots of colors and blend them into the paint helps me correct the color values and build up the face until I am happy with the final result. Then when I am happy with everything, I apply my dry brush technique for one final time. Some of you might have already recognized the model by now. Of course, it is the beautiful Cara Delevingne. And here is how the final portrait looks like. The full process only took me about two hours and I didn't have to wait for anything to dry. I could just continue painting until everything was finished. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you like to try that out for yourself too, go get your materials and watch my full painting process on Patreon. I included a second camera window for my palette so that it is super easy for you to follow along and learn my techniques so that you can paint a portrait like that too. Get access to the full two hours of real-time painting by joining me on Patreon at the real-time video reward. For only $10 you get not only access to this painting video, but you get also access to a library of over 80 painting videos and lessons, progress pictures and valuable painting tips for oils, watercolor and acrylics. Download the reference photo now and start painting right away. And if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the extra portion of art, you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more, I send you a beautiful set of three unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turned them into beautiful magnets, stickers and posters cards, which are not only wonderful decorations for your home, but also are rare collectibles, because once I send them out, they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash leobabrückner. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye!